thanks for having me tonight, uh, David. Uh, just as we get going, my name is Nate Burbage. I am, I love fuzzy lops. It's one, been one of the passions of my life. Uh, luckily, I've been able to do this for numbers for several decades. And then I've been uh, a few years ago, I went ahead and got my judge's license. Um, I've had the privilege of, of judging throughout the country and overwhelmingly my favorite breed in all of the ARBA is the American Fuzzy Lump. Um, just to tell a little bit about us, um, our show team is a Green Burb Fuzzy Lops. Uh, it's Carol and Kendall Green, uh, that's to the right of the picture, and my sweet son, Stewie. Uh, several, we met through rabbits several years ago. We began trading bunnies back and forth, um, and then it just made sense to combine our herds, and since that, it's probably been, I don't know, five or six years since we did that. And um, the best thing, and we'll circle back to this at the very end, but the best thing about rabbits are the friends that you make through it. We've met the most incredible, amazing people um, through this hobby, um, people that we would have never known otherwise. The rabbits have been amazing. It's been so fun to grow and develop a breed, be a part of that amazing development of a breed. But more importantly, it's been the terrific people that we've met um, through this process. So that's us, Kendall and Carol, and, and then Stewie and me. Um, the other thing is, as we go through these slides, I would um, like to give credit to Carol. She has been a tremendous help in helping me put together this presentation. She's also an Arba judge and um, really one of the stalwarts of our breed and has done so much for our breed. Uh, so thanks to Carol for, for all of her information and and helping me put this together. Okay, so before we get going, what makes a good American fuzzy lop? Right, that's what we're talking about tonight. What does it take to win that, that big show? Um, this is a unique breed, right? So what I wanted to do is highlight breed features, breed characteristics, um, and then go through, and at the end we can um, discuss and, and answer questions. All right. So what makes a great fuzzy lump? All right. Well, a great fuzzy lump would be 100 points, right? The absolute perfect fuzzy lump would be 100 points according to the ARBA standard. What I did, what we've done is we've broken down by a pie chart. What does an amazing fuzzy lump look like? All right. When you compare this to other breeds, what stands out overwhelmingly with the American fuzzy lumps is head, right? Um, head is worth 30 points just as much as the body, right? And then when you combine head and ears, that by itself is 40 points. So it has to have an amazing head. A fuzzy lop has to have terrific ears and then balance that with an amazing body, okay? So we've seen the math, right? We can see the pie chart, what it would look like mathematically. So let's go through and, and talk about visually what does a perfect fuzzy lop look like? What does it take to win? Okay, fuzzy lop is called the head of the fancy. All right, in the Arba Standard of Perfection, page 65, it says the head shall be massive in appearance. All right, the head shall have good width beginning at the base of the ears and carried down between the eyes to a well filled muzzle. All right, over here to the right is a crazy good head on a fuzzy lop. Uh, this is one of our solid or our broken senior bucks. You can see that that head is so dominant, right? Excellent width between the muzzle that carries all the way to the um, base, uh, well-filled cheeks, and it's just massive in appearance. It often looks like a, a bulldog or, or a, uh, anyway, but that's the head feature of the American Fuzzy Lop. Let's break it down a little bit if we can. All right, let's compare and contrast these two rabbits, okay? On the left, these would uh, be very young seniors, okay? On the left is a doe, okay, broken senior doe. And on the right is a very, very young broken senior buck. Both of these are um, in our herd. Okay, uh, let's go through each of these. What does this look like? And, and how do you get those 30 points, all 30 of those head points, right? Okay, so if you look on the left, you need to have width between the eyes. So width of brow that carries all the way to the base of the muzzle. You can see on the left, so those typically will be more refined in their head. Um, what I'm seeing a lot of is pinched between the 
um, you know, kind of an hourglass feature when you're looking at the fuzzy lobs head on. So they'll have width at the top of the skull and then more width at the at the base, but then it kind of arrows in like an hourglass. We need to get away from that, right? More refined heads. On the right, you'll see, so the, our young broken senior buck is so much width of the skull at the top of the head and it carries the exact same width all the way uh, to the base of the muzzle, right? Width, width, width. That's what makes those amazing fuzzy lop heads. Okay. Now let's talk about curvature of skull. So this is that side profile. Same rabbits, okay? Um, on the left, you can see that she's more refined. So when I'm talking, uh, look at the curvature around the eye, and you can see there's not much, uh, it's not, it's more refined in appearance compared to the buck on the right. So again, this buck is massive in appearance. He's excellent curvature to the skull. It's a very, very bold side profile. That's what we talk about when we're talking about curvature of skull. All right, moving forward, ears, okay? We're, it's, they're worth 10 points. In the standard of perfection, it talks about the ears should be well-placed, lopping vertically from a wide, flatly, slightly flattened ear base, okay? You want good substance, openings that are close to the cheek, and excellent width across and well-rounded ears. All right, let's talk about that. So on the right is one of our really young, solid junior bucks. I love this buck's ears. Uh, earlier this summer, I took a picture of this side profile to show um, Carol how amazing, I, I'm in love with this guy's ears. So look at the width at the base of the ear, well, the top of the ear, and it's they're perfectly shaped they have excellent, they're well furred, they have excellent substance, and then it's round at the tip of the ears. You see how they just lop. It looks like you've just cut them off and glued them to the side of the head. This is what a good, this is this is what 10 points of ear look like, okay? Um, one of the things that we've seen recently with fuzzy lops is the length of the ear, and this, is, this has changed. Um, they seem to be getting a, a bit longer, um, and we've always talked about Length of ear typically correlates with length of body, right? So the shorter, rounder the ear typically correlates to the rounder, shorter bodies. The longer the ear, the longer the body type, okay? Um, in the standard of perfection, the 2016 edition, it talks about ears that can go half an inch to an inch below the jawline. We have since taken that out, um, and in the updated standard of perfection, that ear measurement will be gone. And it is just, you want ears that are proportioned to the size of the head, okay? Faults on the, the ear of a fuzzy lop would be pointed, narrow, thin, folded, right? Um, so similar to a hollow lop, you don't want any of those thin, twisted ears or folded, okay? And again, we always talk about this, right? So fuzzy lops can be, when you pull them out, just generally, they can be of an excited nature. So you, you want to make sure, let the rabbit calm down, right? Um, it's a fuzzy not sold up if the ears are airplaned out. So you want them, again, you want a nice, perfectly placed ear um, that just lops down. All right. Let's talk about proportionate ears, okay? On the left, these are ears that have excellent substance. They have really nice shape. They're just too long to balance with the head. This is a junior doe on the left. She's an outcross. And so we all know that we have to have those as part of our herd because otherwise they get too genetically close. So every once in a while, you've got to have that outcross and it's absolutely critical to get a winning fuzzy lot to, to diversify the herd, uh, strengthen that, that genetic line. But you can see that whenever this happens, when you get these out, when we outcross, we tend to get, you know, bigger, massive rabbits, which are good. But again, you can see that this junior doe on the left Ears are way too long. She's going to be a monster. This doe will be five five pounds. Okay, on the right, perfect. This is one of our herd bucks. Dash, so solid senior buck, two years old. You can see how those ears literally look like you cut them off and just glued them to the size uh, of uh, Dash's head. He is perfectly. They're super proportionate um, to the size and massiveness of that head. Okay. All right. Next, we talk about crown, right? So we've heard this misnomer multiple times. 
Um, there's no points on a crown in a fuzzy lob. What it takes to win at the big shows is an excellent crown in a fuzzy lob. If you have slipped crowns, the ears are going to be terrible. They're not going to lop. They're going to be thin. They're going to be folded. All right. So let's first talk about the rabbit on the left. This is a broken senior doe. Um, she has decent shape to the ears, but you can see that it's her crown's way too slipped, right? It's placed. When you look at the placement of the crown, it's nearly on the you know, shoulder of the rabbit. It's way behind the ear. And what it does is it kind of spoils that overall appearance, makes the ears look thinner in shape, also in substance. Typically when you get them on the table, then they flip their ears back. Those are the bunnies that are not going to win. Unfortunately, you might have a fuzzy lop that has nice ears, but the crown is so slip that it just spoils the overall appearance. So on the left is a broken senior buck, one of our uh, older broken senior bucks by the name of uh, Dark Horse. Uh, this buck had perfect crown placement. Do you see how it's just behind the eye? Uh, and it just magnifies the massiveness of the head, the curvature to the skull, and the ears, right? Those ears are well furred, they're thick, they're round at the tips. And so to have a winning fuzzy lop, you have to have an amazing crown, all right? Just like that buck on the left. All right, moving forward. Anybody that knows fuzzy lops knows that this is like the great debate. Forget the liberals and the conservatives. The, the fuzzy lops, it's, well, do you want them high or do you want them low? And then you get everybody, you know, every mixed opinion. Over the 30 years plus that I've had the fuzzy lops, I've seen the standard change multiple times, right? Super deep, all the way down to the carpet munchers, um, and now it's mid. So let's talk about that, right? How do I pose them, right? To get a winning fuzzy lop, you need to have a rabbit that is easily posed, okay? One that, based on preference, right, some judges may pose them a little bit higher. Some judges may want to put their heads all the way to the ground. So these are two uh, young, very young broken senior bucks that I took their picture. So they're brothers. They're very complimentary in their appearance. Um, but you need a buck that's easily posed and is not going to fight the judge because, again, some of them are going to be posed up. Some of them are going to be posed down. So let's talk about what does that look like. How do we correctly pose uh, and how do we address this, this debate? Okay, so heads up. Head, so this is out of the standard. The head shall be set close and a medium height on the shoulder. Medium, 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 right? Medium head set. So where, what you're looking at is what's the high point, okay? Um, it's, so a dwarf, a hollow lop, the head is on top of the body. That's the shoulder is basically the high point or it has a shelf and then kind of goes down with a fuzzy lop that this is a unique breed feature right so it's a mid headset but the high point on the fuzzy lop is over the hip so when we pose them so this is um this is neon gypsy on the right she's super easily posed rabbit if you wanted to pose her up high she'd go high you wanted her to be a carpet muncher she'd be a carpet muncher right here so her head is level it's even with the depth over the hip Okay, um, I will agree, and, and I'll be the first to admit clarification of what this medium headset is needed as we look at the standard of perfection, because there is so much, there's a bit of gray in this, right? Um, and hopefully in this next uh, standard, you know, we, we hear that they're grouped different breeds into mid and high and, and low. And so I'm excited to see, hopefully we have a bit of clarification on this. But the bottom line is this. A fuzzy lop is not a hollow lop, okay? So you don't want to pose the pie, but then also it's not a mini lop, right? So they're not, heads not to be smashed to the carpet, okay? Let's talk about visually, what does that mean, okay? All right, so too low. When I was a kid, first in the fuzzy lops, these were the winners, all right? So you can see the amazing progression of this really cool breed. Um, this is low, way too low right to, with currently what it takes to win all right these rabbits are what we call carpet munchers they're low uh they're flat over the top of the hips and they're long okay this is i think this would be universally everybody would agree that these rabbits are posed way too low and these are low fuzzy lops okay 
All right, so that's too low. Then these are too high, okay? And again, this would be, it's up for discussion, right? But these are two, so on the left is a broken senior dough. You can see that her head is posed, it's up a little bit above where that hip is or over the top of the depth of loin. So really deep dough and we love those doughs over that are have great depth of shoulder, but again, it's just too high. It ends up, they end up uh, typically being a little more refined in bone and a little narrower in the shoulders. On the right is a broken junior buck. You can see way too tall, way too tall to, to balance. Um, and again, the high point is the head as opposed to depth of loin is a great characteristic. You want the deep point over the hips. Okay, so let's move to the next. So but we've gone too low, right? Too high. Don't overthink this, okay? So this is what we always talk about. Don't overthink this. What's the middle, right? There's gonna be a range in the middle, right? So have a rabbit that's easily posed, that, that's malleable, right? So both of these are broken junior does. On the left is a doe that won a, the national show uh, a few years ago. Um, she's super easy to, uh, to, to pose. You see that, you know, right here, her head is level, the high points over the hip. On the right is a junior doe that never got to be shown this year because of all of the show shutdowns, but I was super excited to show her over the summer. You can see she's very easily posed. That um, I love how easy, how well she and still she just sits, depth over the hip. Um, very pretty coat. Okay, so this is middle range. Let's keep going with what middle range fuzzy lops look like. Okay, middle. So here's another broken junior doe from. Uh, earlier this summer. Middle means it's in the middle, right? So I wanted a, a front headset. You saw uh, a solid senior doe that, that was has done quite well on the national level. Here's another one that literally it looks like you've cut off her head and just poked it right, or glued it right on in the, in the middle of the bunny. She's awesome depth over the top of the hip. Um, and her headset, she's just easily, easily posed. Okay, that's a middle. Here's another one. So these are the best and best opposite. Uh, a breed at a convention a few years ago. Again, both of those are very easily posed. Uh, the doe on the, the solid senior doe on the left, so pose however you want. The buck on the right, this is a broken uh, senior buck, uh, and then small town famous. Again, very easily natured, or very easy natured, very easily posed. These are middle range, right? Middle range posed. Okay. All right. Um, so that's middle. Okay. Uh, let's talk about, you need a rabbit deep over the hip, okay? Depth of loin, we've talked about this, is a, one of our breed features. On the left is one of uh, our really young, solid senior does that is just starting her show career. What I love about this doe is she has awesome curvature to the skull. You see if she just rests perfectly on those front limbs, um, really nicely placed ears, and then her body, you can see that uh, the deep point is over the hips. She just rounds nicely and carries all the way to the base of the table. Uh, on the right is another doe. Again, this would be a kind of an angled view. You want to win, you want a uh, fuzzy lop that has that awesome depth over the hip and just rounds nicely and carries all the way down to the base of the table. Okay, next. One of the key features that we've looked at through the years, you want a fuzzy lop that has that to win, right? To stand out, it's gotta be above average. Okay, it's got to be, wow, um, one of the, the features of this breed and, and what really makes a rabbit stand out, stands out to judges, stands out to other uh, breeders, we always talk about the head-to-body ratio, okay? Um, what is the size of the head? How does it compare to the size of the body, okay? Breeder rule of thumb, this is what we always consider, is one part head, two-part body. So this is a young, really young, uh, broken junior buck from earlier this summer. Again, he never got shown. Uh, but you can see, I love, I want, I was so excited to show this guy at convention. You can see how massive his head is, how perfectly set those ears are. But then compare and look at how small his body is, right? He just looks massive in appearance. But when you're looking at the head, so one, one part head to, so on the body, just put your two heads behind there. He is exceptional. His head is so massive compared to uh, the size of his body, okay? Um, generally, as we've talked earlier, does will have smaller heads than the bucks, 
but just to stand out, to have that shock factor, you want to have one part head, two part body, just like this buck is, okay? All right, wool. So this is not, we always talk about fuzzy lops are not, it's not a wool producing or a production animal. However, to win, right? So you still have a significant amount of points on density, texture, and the length is two points. So to win, you need a, a fuzzy lop that completely stands out with wool, super dense. Um, you remember the rabbit that won last year, best in show, had amazing coat, right? So both, so on the top, this is a broken junior doe from earlier this year. Uh, she's amazing wool, right? It's really nice length, looks super dense, okay? The white ones just, when they're clean and they're broken, they just shine, okay? Down below is a broke, is a solid junior buck, again, from earlier this year. I always talk about texture that you can see. So just texture when you look at the rabbit, it's not going to mat. Like when you look at that, it has such good texture to the coat. That's what stands out, right? So juniors typically will have a softer coat um, to win as a, in the junior classes. It's so competitive with American Fuzzy Lops. You really need to have, uh, with the does, you want those big, thick, dense coats, but they got to have good texture like both of these rabbits do. So really, it, it was a shame that we never got to show these juniors, but you, could, you get the idea. Okay. All right. Now, what does it take to win? So I love this picture. This is from a few years ago. Uh, so every convention, Carol and I get together and we go through all of our juniors, right? Um, and this was actually a longer panorama. It's so cute looking at all these awesome juniors. Uh, it takes continual grading of each of your rabbits. It takes super refinement. It takes goal setting every single year. So this year, what I was working on was I was, I noticed in my own herd, my rabbits were getting narrower. They were deeper. They were narrow in the shoulder. Okay. And, and my ears, I was losing kind of that massive appearance. So this year, what I worked on was balance and bone. Okay. Set a goal every single year. This is what I'm going to work on. Um, and then have it be measurable, right? How do we as breeders identify measurable goals, right? So say by this time next year, I will have you know, X number of solids that will look like this. Have a pit, hang a picture on the, in the barn, right? This is what it would take to win. This is what I'm working towards. This is what I think I've lost. And this is how I will get there, okay? But then on the same token, identify if it's not working, right? So read everything to this, the same buck. So you're identifying different data points, different patterns, right? Recognize if that's a really strong buck or if it was that a step backwards, okay? So let's go through and let's look at different ages of juniors, what it takes to make the cut, okay? So this is what I love talking um, about with babies. Babies with bone, babies with balance. So a uh, mentor of mine, Chris Zimney, always talks about bone and hollow lops. Guess what? It's the same thing in fuzzy lops, right? Those cute, amazing, massive hollow lops with bone, those cute, a massive uh, Netherland dwarfs have bone, right? So if you get these, so it's, it's the same thing in fuzzy lops. Narrow, refined babies grow up to be narrow, refined adults. So on the left, look how stinking cute that little rabbit is. Awesome length on front limb. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, you can just see he's standing up on his um, rear legs, but those back feet are so short, right? Look how short and massive that the chest is, okay? Flipping over to the right-hand side of the page, this is that same rabbit a couple weeks down the road. Do you see how wide his chest is? And then the feet are just massive and they just rest gently. Okay, down below... Those are two broken junior little babies, okay? But what was so cool is as I was grading the juniors going through these babies on FaceTime with my with Carol and others, it was just cool to see, like, these little babies in the box. I mean, these things, are, those are like three weeks old. And look at their ears are already down. They have massive, crazy heads, beautiful curvature to the skull. Anyway, those are babies with bone and balance. So the three Bs of baby fuzzy lops or baby, you want babies with bone and balance, right? Okay. 
Um, the other thing is I do watch for, even at, at, at a very young age, they want a lot. You want ears that are placed correctly. You want awesome crowns. Crowns are crazy important. I cannot emphasize that enough. Look at how all of these babies, their ears are already locked. Okay? Pay attention to that. If their ears are straight up, they're going to have not good crowns as adults. Okay? So let's move on. Okay? So these are babies. What am I looking for in the little babies? Okay? Then move forward. Okay? So on the left is a solid junior doe. Again, from uh, just a few, this is a few weeks ago. You can see how massive she is. Um, look at that. Terrific uh, skull, uh, excellent width in the between the brow, excellent width all the way carries to the base of the muzzle. Really broad cheeks. You see again, those are that. That's the same crown that we've been talking about, and those beautiful ears that are very proportionate to the size of the head. And again, it just looks like they're um, cut off and glued to the size of the side of the head. Again, you can see she has a really nice chest. Really short, thick bone. Um, I just love that doe. I think she's going to have a really bright show career. On the right is probably my favorite Roka Junior doe um, in our herd right now. Um, this doe is she's really special. You can see um, excellent curvature to the skull, beautiful width at the base of the muzzle, beautiful crown, excellent shape and substance to her ear. Uh, her, she's super easily posed. She has a very strong shoulder, rounds nicely over the top of the hip, carries all the way to the base of the table. But what I love in this picture shows um, how wide that chest is, how short that front limb is. And she just looks massive in such a tiny package. So again, I'm really excited for her show career uh, to get off and, and running. All right, so those would be uh, some juniors. The other thing with the fuzzy lops is this. Um, so one of our breed features is we have our animals have longer shelf life than other breeds, right? So Britannia petites, you can't show them for very long. Many fattens, you can't show them for very long. Fuzzy lops, you can show for a long time, all right? Do not cull too early. That would be anybody that asks me kind of what's, what's the secret sauce, don't cull these rabbits too early. So on the left um, is a junior, a broken junior black. He won, I think he won best office at one of the national shows. Don't call them too early, all right? Because they take a long time to develop to get that massive head. On the right is a young broken senior buck from earlier this summer. And you can just see how massive that head is. Um, it's going to take a while. He's still small, but he's got to grow into that um, head. He's very nicely balanced. He has a bright show career in front of him. But fuzzy lops, it takes a long time for that um, to really fully develop and, and appear massive um, it, to get a really massive rabbit. Okay. Um, this is the best breed in the hobby, period. You can see they're so gentle. They're very docile animals. Um, on the left is my all-time favorite rabbit of uh, that I've, we've ever had, Oscar. Um, he passed away earlier this year, but he was like a, a, a stalwart at all of the, the big national shows because he would just be so sad if he didn't come. You can see he's kissing my wife at a convention last year, and anybody that walked by his cage, you know, he wanted them just loved, right? On the right is my daughter Mia and her sweet little buck that, from convention last year. So this breed is, you have to groom them, but at the same time, they're so full of love. Um, they have the best temper ones. Okay, so what are you waiting for, right? Get a fuzzy lop, join the AFLRC. This is our website, um, it's a very inclusive group. The fuzzy lop club is family, right? Um, recently, uh, Paula and Rob Grady got the otters passed, so there's a brand new variety. There's tons of excitement in our breed. We're coming off, off a massive win last year, best in show with Linda and Gabrielle Hibbert. Um, a couple years before that, uh, Lena McGee won Best in Show at Arbor Convention with the youth. Um, it really is it's a great family to be a part of. It's an amazing, um, it's just exciting to be a part of this. It's very humbling to be part of this, that people really work well together. Um, people are dedicated to improving this breed, um, and it really has a bright future. So 
anyway, that's what I think it, it takes. It takes a family to, to win, it takes um, amazing rabbits, but, but people that are willing to, to work together to produce really good rabbits and, and help each other and support each other. So that's what it takes to win. Lots of different factors. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. And I'll let you guys, uh, or just go ahead and go off of um, mute and go ahead and ask Nate the questions you have. Linda, you know more about this than me. You've won more than anybody. Right, there she is. Hey, how are you? Good. Long time no see. When are we no going to get to the right? shows? <laughs> Who knows? Just crazy. But anyway, so well, I think you missed the beginning. We were talking about we were grading different head types, and anyway, but I can send you the stuff so that you've got them as well. We'll be but on share the... with us, Linda. What do you think? Tell us what you think. What does it take think... to win? <laughs> I think you did an amazing job. You've got it all figured out. You know, you've been there a lot. I know. No. Yeah. So, you know, I think the only thing that, well, you know, confirmationally and coat, coat is amazing. I can't, can't believe how important that is. That was the real thing yeah. that made the difference with dancer last year, I believe at convention. Yeah. I really I think, think so. Um, and you, you definitely hit on that in your presentation. Um, and, and the thing about breeding is a line breeding. You hit on breeding the same buck to a bunch of does to see how he's yeah. producing. And I think that is very good advice. I do that a lot, but more than that, I stick with a line. I really have the line and have a plan with the line. The idea of having a goal for the year. Yeah, that's great. Important, really important. Do I have any questions? I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. It's, it is just such a cool breed and they're such good stock. And the bottom line is this, I mean, there used to be controversy as far as Fuzzy Hollands and, you know, is it a purebred? Is it not a purebred? Hey, we'll take you anyway right now. If you want to show, will help you, right? There's a lot of stock that's available. There's excellent breeders across the country, no matter where you are, that are willing to help um, and fix different traits, help you with different traits. People helped me and it's the same way. I mean, it's just, it's really exciting to be a part of it. I love this breed so much. So. And honestly, honestly, you know, you and Carol and Sherry Albrecht and Paula, you have all been so instrumental in helping the success that Gabrielle and I have had. It is, it's a family, it's an AFL family and we love getting together and certainly yeah. have missed it this year. Oh yeah, oh, I agree. And the best part of convention is having everybody go down the line. I mean, somebody's asking me, what, what do you miss the most? And these are business colleagues and you miss the competition. Yeah, maybe a little, but what I really miss is walking down the aisles and seeing how much work everybody put into their bunnies that year. And to see like, oh, I love that. Oh, I need to work on that. That That's a good reminder. I can do better on this part anyway. And that, that's what I've missed about all the shows this year is it's just walking down and seeing how cool everybody, you know, all the cool things that everybody's doing with this breed and, and the excitement. And it's going to just keep growing with the otters. And anyway. The otters are fun. That's a, I'm super excited about that. Yeah. it will be really neat. So anyway. David, what did you what have you thought about fuzzy lops? What can we do better from an outsider looking at what's cool about that West Coast classic is one of those does was one that we had donated to the um, Wade Burkhalter's mom's auction. So it's amazing to see like how well that doe did. Anyway, it was so cool. That was a neat time. So anyway, yeah. I don't know. Ari, what what input do you have about the fuzzy lops? My well, actually, I have my a lot of interesting um, judging experience with the fuzzy lock, especially at Carol Green's house with you too, 
it, yeah, that's, I mean, like, no, um, we don't really have the Brazil up here. So it's kind of, it's always my first time to judge in the US with the Brazil. <laughs> yeah, I learned a lot from that. Yeah. and. You said something that was really important. You can't mention Fuzzy Lops without mentioning Carol Gray. I mean, she's just done so much for this breed. Um, you know, started out with her kids raising them, and then she carried on once her kids, uh, Adam and Kendall, graduated. So from high school, she just kept doing them, and she's just been so dedicated. But Grady's have also helped a ton. Brian Hartzell was totally instrumental in uh, developing this breed and making what it is today. Um, and anyone that – the wins now has something from you know way back when would have some Hartzell rabbits in it um have carol green rabbits and then uh sherry albrecht won and has been a long time wonderful breeder of, of our breed sherry in the early 90s it was sherry coop um, but all of our rabbits go back to those so yeah it's been really cool very dedicated breeders for a very long time well, anyway, that's all I have. Thanks, everybody.